Rich Lerner of the Golf Channel back here on the Rich Eisen Show. What do you think, Rich? Well, it's a new generation. Good to be on with you, Rich. They certainly respect Tiger. They, they know what he's done for the game, what he's done for them, putting money in their pocket with these huge TV contracts. But they no longer fear Tiger. Maybe someday that'll change. Uh, but that was a, a sneaky, great performance by Molinari. 69 is not sort of a mind-blowing number like a 64 in the final round. But given how difficult Carnoustie played, um, two under par, without a bogey, under the pressure, playing alongside, you know, a mythical creature, as Sean Norris on Saturday, Tiger's playing partner. Sean Norris called him a mythical creature uh, without a bogey for two days. Um, th- this is a case of a guy who was sort of a journeyman for, for a long time in his mid thirties in the last two months, suddenly figuring something out. And he's been a great player, the best player in the world. The last two months, if he keeps it up. We, we don't know, but I saw this. I was on the call for the BMW PGA championship. It's the flagship event on the European tour played outside of London in May. And Molinari thoroughly outplayed Rory McIlroy for two days over the weekend. I mean, kicked his rear end up, down, and sideways, didn't miss a shot. But the thing is, we'd always called him kind of a ball-striking genius, but didn't make enough putts. He's added some sort of creativity, magic touch the last two months, and it's made him a different player. He's now the sixth-ranked player in the world, and he's every bit of that. Yeah, I know. And, and uh, again, I didn't see his... Uh, round on Saturday very much, but obviously I was locked in on Sunday. I don't even think he came in through the side door with any of his putts, Rich. I no, mean, no. He, he was jarring them with pace, and it, and it was yeah, phenomenal. It, it And it's odd, too. I mean, this is a guy in his mid-30s who was just always known as kind of a boring ball striker. If you ever listen to our, our telecast on Golf Channel, anytime Francesco Molinari came on the screen with Francesco Molinari, second shot here at number seven, one of the game's premier ball striker, uh, strikers, struggles a bit on the greens. And so, you know, he just kind of languished. He was a good earner, made money, 25th, 28th, 33rd in the world, that kind of guy, but never made any noise. Uh, but he is a different guy. He's training differently. He's looking at data. Uh, and, and I think that's the beauty of golf, Rich, is that you can age well. Uh, ben Hogan didn't really peak until he was in his mid to late 30s. Padraig Harrington won three majors beginning at the age of 36. So it's possible uh, Nick Foles won a Super Bowl uh, as, you know, sort of a, <laughs> a journeyman quarterback. But uh, I th- it, it was a, an incredible day in a lot of ways. The first sort of four to five hours with Tiger peaking and, and Tiger threatening were more exciting than the last, say, 30, 40 minutes. Um, but when you had six guys at one point tied at six under par and three or four of the biggest names, Woods, Spieth, Justin Rose, Rory McIlroy with the Eagle at 14, uh, it was off the chain. And it, it turned out to be the highest-rated final round of an Open since Tiger won in 2006 in Liverpool. Wow. Rich Lerner of the Golf Channel here on the Rich Eisen Show. And, you know, Johnny Miller was commenting during the NBC broadcast, Rich, that uh, Tiger was moving spectacularly, that, that, it, it, mm. that he didn't have a care in the world, that whatever was going on with his back, whatever might have been going on with his whatever is between his temples, which is amazing that, 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 that he would have any sort of uh, mental uh, lapse during a golf, uh, during a round at all, based on what he, what he did back in the day. I, I mean, he's back, right, Rich? We don't even need to have that conversation well, yeah, anymore. I mean, he, 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 he's, all, he's back in the conversation. There's no doubt about it. I mean, he's right there. Um, he, but he's not back to what he was. But let, let's just sort of backtrack. May of a year ago, when he kind of hit bottom, right, side of the road, middle of the night, uh, I was personally concerned for his health. Forget about his golf. Uh, so I didn't really think this was possible. I had my doubts. Uh, and even Tiger late last year said he wasn't sure if he was going to be playing again. I mean, at the President's Cup, you know, in September, Tiger was hitting 60-yard pitch shots. That was the most that he could do. He started the year outside the top 600 in the world. Uh, he's now up to number 50. So I, I think the hunger and the ambition are all the way back. The intensity is back. Uh, the swing, I think, is back. Uh, what's not quite there is the ability to finish, and that's mental. Uh, and that's odd to say about a guy who was 
you know, the all-time closer. I mean, when he had the lead at, at seven under, old Tiger slams the door shut. There's no chance for anyone else. Old Tiger. But you know, that this is a different guy who went through a, a, a tremendous you know, emotional trauma going all the way back to 2009, 10, 11. You know, uh, so you have to allow for Tiger to sort of learn all over again uh, how to handle the heat. Again, that sounds bizarre. He was the all-time no-doubt-about-it guy, and now there's some doubt. But I think it's, it's fun to watch, and, and we sort of know the day will, will come soon where we're writing that story. Is this one of the greatest sports comebacks of all time? And you know, that's a discussion for another day. It, it, it will be debated. Um, and um, it, you know, I, yesterday we were sort of preparing – you know, comparables, you know, in terms of the enormity of that story, a Tiger win. Uh, it, in a recent vintage, I think it would have been caught. Stop me if I'm out of line here, but probably would have been along the lines of, of Cubs winning a, a World Series for the first time in over a century. LeBron coming from 3-1 down to bring the NBA title back to the land. Is that fair? Or well, I mean, I, I you, think you that, cover sports. No, I, I think, cover golf. I know. I hear you. I think the LeBron one is one, but the Cubs, I mean, it's, I mean, we've seen Tiger win. Um, I mean, this would have been the comeback story. Uh, I think you, you've, right. you've mentioned it before about obviously Hogan, you've about some of the comebacks that we've seen. It, it definitely would have been up there with some of the greatest comebacks yeah. we've ever I mean, seen. I mean, of lesser, as long as we're, we're, we're going there of lesser note, but I'm sure for this particular athlete, it, it was uh, monumental. Andre Agassi sure. came back from some dependency issues and some injuries to win. I think it was five majors. Uh, Peyton Manning had, correct me if I'm wrong, a broken neck mm-hmm. and, and won a Super Bowl yeah. after that, right? Yes. Monica Seles was, was stabbed, stabbed. And, and yeah. two years later came back to win a major. So something in that, that, that category. But Tiger's you know, a, a, an athlete of such fame. I mean, um, no doubt. He really, he moves the needle. That's why I think wow. LeBron. LeBron's a, an excellent example. A couple more minutes left with Rich Lerner yeah. of the Golf Channel. What, what should? That's the way I'm going to phrase it. What should com- the conversation be about Jordan Spieth, Rich? Good question. I, you know, he uh, sometimes he's difficult to figure. What, but. Um, Moms and grandmoms. He's the boy next door, right? He, he's really likable. He, he's authentic. Moms and grandmoms, wherever I go, they say, what's wrong with my Jordan, right? <laughs> it's my Jordan. He's that kind of guy. But I think part of Jordan's appeal is that he is so vulnerable and, and fidgety and jumpy and at times unsure. Uh, and you want to reach out and pull him close. But then he, he, he'll, he'll turn around and, and he'll do something that blows your mind. And we're constantly referencing Jordan in, in the context of he, he's about to join, fill in the blank, it's somebody who played golf in the silent movie era, Gene Sarazen in the 1920s, or even someone who, who played in the Reconstruction period in the late 1860s, young Tom Morris. In other words, every time he's about to win a major, he, he, he's going to achieve something of, of incredible historical significance. Yesterday would have been four majors at the age of 24. It's a very short list. It would have been back-to-back opens. The, the, the only other player to, to do that before the age of 25 was young Tom Morris. So he's done amazing things. He has the it factor. He, uh, the last thing I'll say about Jordan, he's the great quarterback. He'll throw two interceptions. And you'll go, oh, you're killing me. Oh, my. And then the next game, he'll thread the needle with 10 seconds left from 20 yards out, and you'll swear he's the greatest thing you've ever seen. <laughs> he has that it factor. And, and I, I, I don't worry long term about Jordan. He's, um, he's, a, he's a great athlete and a great, great young person. A great chat, as always, Rich. Uh, we'll chat with you uh, before the PGA Championship. Uh, in St. Louis. Let's do it. Thanks, Let's do it. Let's do it. You got safe travels. It's uh, Rich Lerner Bye-bye. Golf Channel. The Rich Eisen Show, weekdays at noon Eastern on Audience.